What's up guys, Miles here with 95 mac and if you're a fan of good ideas, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future content like this. Today we're gonna to be doing one of many comparisons that we're gonna be doing between the brand new Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 and the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Both of these devices are essentially the flagship tablets for both Samsung and Apple respectively. And today we're gonna to be doing a video to see how both of these devices stack up against one another in terms of the displays because they both have very excellent displays on paper, but who's got the better one? Let's go over the iPad Pro 12.9 specs first. This iPad Pro is equipped with a 12.9 inch mini LED display, otherwise known as the Super Retina XDR display. So you're looking at a 2732 by 2048 resolution display with a 264 PPI count. You've also got P3 wide color gamut support, over 2500 full array local dimming zones, and up to 1600 nits of peak brightness for HDR content. In addition to all that, you've got 120 hertz its ProMotion technology, which gives you that super fluid experience. There aren't many displays at this size that offer this same level of performance at the same price as the iPad Pro. And if you haven't seen our full review of the iPad Pro, be sure to check out the card in the top right corner. The Tab S8 Ultra's display is nothing to scoff at either. What you're looking at here is a 14.6 inch Super AMOLED display. It's got an 1848 by 2960 resolution with a 240 PPI and 120 Hertz display. And in typical Samsung fashion, it's rocking certified HDR10 plus support. And because of this OLED panel, the peak brightness is around 500 nits, but I've yet to get an official figure from Samsung. I think these major differences in aspect ratios on these tablets is quite a bigger deal than what you might think. If you're used to the form factor of the S series Galaxy tabs, then it might be a bit jarring moving over to something like this iPad. And I think it's even more of an awkward transition switching to a Galaxy tab from an iPad Pro. I feel like Samsung's trying to give this tablet a laptop-like feel with that 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So much so that using this massive 14 inch display in portrait mode feels quite weird, honestly. And the iPad Pro with that four by three aspect ratio feels much more like you're using a tablet at this size. The Tab S8 is very laptop-y. And for some people, I think that may be a good thing, but it's not really something that I'm a fan of personally. With both of these devices having 120 Hertz capable displays, I thought it'd be good to compare which tablet has the more consistently smooth UI because not all high refresh rate displays are built the same. And in my testing, I found that the iPad Pro is consistently smoother as far as interactions with the UI. There have been countless occasions where I'm swiping to go home or accessing the notification shade and notice a little bit of lag on the Tab S8 or what feels like lag because this is a 120 hertz display. So when you're doing an animation within the UI and it looks like 30 hertz when it's normally 120, it's very noticeable. So the first of many tests is an HDR video test. This is the HDR Chroma Galaxy test. And I think this is really good for showing sharpness, blooming, and overall uh, dynamic range as far as the HDR display capabilities. And I think definitely in the more contrasty scenes in this video, you can tell that the iPad Pro is clearly ahead. I think for a lot of the wider landscapey looking shots, you can tell that the Tab S8 just quite isn't as sharp as the iPad Pro here. The aspect ratio might have something to do with it slightly, but I think the iPad Pro just has a bit more contrast and depth to that panel. As you can see, both are capable of getting very bright, but you can clearly see that the iPad is just a bit brighter here. And I think overall that has to do with the dynamic range and peak brightness capabilities of this panel. With this Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, you're limited to around 500 nits or so, although I'm not aware of the official brightness figure. But yeah, you're getting double the brightness here on this iPad Pro, so you're gonna see that difference. And it's hard to tell for certain scenarios, but one thing that's definitely noticeable as far as downsides on the iPad iPad Pro is the blooming. And that's kind of a problem with mini LED panels in general. Even the $5,000 display that I have uh, currently has a little bit of blooming issues. And that's just something that they're gonna have to work past with mini LED. But even though you are getting that pretty noticeable blooming for the iPad Pro here, I gotta say, I enjoy the image much more here on the iPad Pro overall, as far as this specific piece of content goes. But I think both are doing a great job here. This is another really great piece of HDR content that I like to use for comparisons. I think this moment here in the beginning is really great for comparing the dynamic range and sharpness between these two tablets displays. And I think once again, you can clearly see that the iPad Pro edges out the Tab S8 Ultra 
just a bit as far as dynamic range and sharpness. But I'd say this video display test is where you're gonna see the iPad Pro and Tab S8 Ultra most evenly matched as far as display capabilities. There's definitely a noticeable difference in color as far as the displays between the two. You can see that the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is a bit more saturated in typical Samsung fashion. The whites and blues aren't as quite as natural as on the iPad Pro here. And I think the part where this guy shows up is a great part to show the differences in the reds and oranges in this display. You can clearly see it's a bit more yellowy on the Samsung panel. This scene right here is where you're gonna see the iPad Pro and Tab S8 Ultra be as most evenly matched as possible. You can clearly see that Samsung calibrates their displays to be very punchy and vibrant. And I think the super punchy, vibrant, colorful scene plays well on the Samsung device just as it does on the iPad Pro. And this scene is also getting really crazy with brightness. You can tell that the iPad Pro can handle that peak brightness, that dynamic range, just a little bit better than the Tab S8 Ultra can. This is a really cool scene right here. Uh, when you see it's transformed, this sheep is transformed into this caterpillar creature. It's super colorful, really showing off the potential, how punchy and vibrant uh, both of these displays can be. And I'd say from this video alone, if I were to only watch this video to try to compare the display capabilities between the two, it'd be very hard for me to decide which one is better. But if you really nitpick, if you really pixel peep, I'd say the iPad Pro still edges out the Tab S8 Ultra for this. Hey, that guy looks a little bit familiar. I thought it'd be good to test out one of my HDR videos just to show a real world YouTube video playing on these devices to show the differences. And I'd say the first biggest difference that I notice is color accuracy between the two. Just because I color graded uh, and mastered this video, I can definitely tell that the Samsung is definitely a little off. Now, there is the fact that I'm used to producing all of my videos on Apple calibrated displays, at least as far as like my MacBook Pro and stuff like that. So that might have played a part in how I perceive the color differences between these two devices for this video. But I gotta say, I think the iPad Pro once again just has the much more natural representation of this video as far as colors go. But I gotta say, I'm quite impressed with how well it handles brightness and the dynamic range for this particular piece of content because I definitely pushed it as far as uh, the nits for this video to really uh, flex the MacBook Pro's display as that's what I was reviewing in this video. This is one of my favorite tests to compare HDR and dynamic range display capabilities on devices. Uh, this is a NASA uh, slash LG OLED HDR test, and it's really good for comparing how well blooming or how worse blooming can be between different devices. And I gotta say, both devices really impressed me with how well uh, they displayed this video. Especially for these parts where you have the moon rotating essentially, I think the blooming was handled very well on the iPad Pro and at certain angles it's not noticeable at all. But once again, you can clearly see there's a slight difference in colors for the whites, grays, blues, as far as the display on the Tab S8 Ultra. It just looks a little bit off compared to the iPad Pro here. But as far as these punchy, vibrant colors go, I'd say the Tab S8 is definitely solid in that regard. As you see the sun shrinking here, I think it's really cool to notice which displays maintain the best black levels as more black consumes the display. And I think the iPad Pro, once again, does a slightly better job at that, but the Tab S8 Ultra, once again, no slouch as far as display performance. This, of course, is the standard HDR local dimming slash blooming tests, and this is where you're going to see the iPad Pro pretty much be obliterated by the Tab S8 Ultra here. The mini LED panel, as I said, is very susceptible to bad blooming, especially in these situations where you've got this super bright white text surrounded by nothing but black. And I didn't get this iPad Pro 12.9 when it initially came out, and although I've used plenty of mini LED displays at this point, I had never really used this one extensively until getting up my hands on this Tab S8 Ultra. And I gotta say the blooming is a little bit worse than I thought it would be. And not really for tests like this, but I'd say just generally when using the UI. I think it's when you're dealing with the not so completely black levels, but the somewhat black levels, the bluish blacks, especially like when dealing with the menu, the settings menu on iOS. When you look at the tablet at certain angles, the blooming is pretty bad if you ask me. And it's something I wonder if Apple thought was worth it to include this mini LED display in this tablet, even at the cost of bad blooming. This is a pixel refresh RGB video, and I think this is a really great test for just displaying 
how these different tablets displays display different basic colors like solid reds, solid blues, solid greens. And as you can see here, the Tab S8 Ultra and iPad Pro clearly have their own slightly different interpretations of red here. But as we go through this gradient of colors, I think it's very apparent how much more punchy and vibrant this mini LED panel is than the Super AMOLED display, despite me thinking that the red here on this Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, at least for this video, is slightly more accurate. Uh, than what we've got on this iPad Pro. And we can see how these two tablets interpret green. I'd say the iPad's interpretation is a bit more light, more limey than what we've got on the Tab S8 Ultra. And then when looking at this pixel refresh test, I'm just reminded of how much more screen real estate you're getting on this Tab S8 Ultra. Obviously it's because it's a bigger device, but I think that aspect ratio allows for more to be seen when viewing standard content like YouTube videos because it's 16 by nine, which is much closer than four by three. But I'd say because of how good this iPad Pro's display is, it doesn't bother me a whole lot. Here's another test clip from Mad Max Fury Road, and we can see here that the Tab S8 Ultra definitely gives the more vivid, uh, slightly more saturated look between the two devices. When looking at the sand and the sky and the general landscape, you can see that the Tab S8 Ultra here clearly has the more purplish kind of brown as to the more yellowish natural brown that we're getting on the iPad Pro. And I think during these flashing light scenes, the dynamic range capabilities of the iPad Pro is really flexed a lot here. I also think within this scene, the skin tones are slightly more natural on the iPad Pro than on the Tab S8 Ultra. But overall, I'm very much a fan of how this scene is looking on both of these devices. Very punchy, very vibrant, uh, very contrasty, but in a good way. With both of these devices starting at 1099 respectively, I think both offer very capable displays. And on its own, the Tab S8 Ultra's display is very good, it's very capable. But when you put it next to the iPad Pro, it's really hard to argue against what this display brings to the table, even despite the really noticeable and sometimes bad blooming because of that mini LED panel. The iPad's blooming is pretty bad and noticeable for things even outside of HDR content, but its performance outside of that is all ahead of the Tab S8 Ultra's display, if you ask me. And I think the nail in the coffin as far as what I personally prefer to use, as far as the display, is the aspect ratio here on the Tab S8 Ultra. I think the 16 by 10 aspect ratio for a display this big is simply too awkward compared to the four by three that we've got on the iPad Pro. But I'd say if you don't care about the super high peak brightness and the excellent dynamic range capabilities of the iPad Pro in comparison to the Tab S8 Ultra, I'd say the Tab S8 Ultra is a great move if you were already considering it. But I think if you want the better overall display, despite it being a little bit smaller, I think the iPad Pro, if you're already considering it, is the way to go for sure. But that's about it for this video. Let me know what you guys think about the displays on these two very expensive tablets. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because we're gonna have a few more comparisons up between these two devices. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.